This is Talking Hardcore, the podcast for people who love hardcore history. We can skip the boring to the interesting stuff. Worst person in the world in history, Genghis Khan. Uh, anyway, I've met his wife. She's not gonna she, she, my wife doesn't listen to this, and she likes me more than his wife likes him. She, <laughs> yeah, right. Is that because aliens crashed and stole their technology? You're watching Talking Hardcore, or maybe listening to Talking Hardcore episode nine. The, uh, we're today we're going to talk about the rest is history. Episodes 347 through 350, which was their American Revolution series. Uh, and just for, for proof, guys, uh, Tom, Adam, and Dominic, here are two Americans that uh, actually made it through your four-part series on the Revolutionary War. And we still don't hate you. Yeah, <laughs> we made it through. We're, we're not even through. angry. Okay, so we're going to start talking about the series. Um, we're in our recording in my basement today, as you can see. Uh we're hoping that the video and audio sounds pretty good. We tried a new microphone and things like that. Let us know what you think. Uh, again, there's a Discord channel set up for Hardcore History where there's a Talking Hardcore discussion. You can check out there. The link will be in the description. So if you go to that Discord and go to that actual channel in the Discord, let us know any thoughts or comments. We want to make content that you like. Uh, so let's jump right in. What were your... Initial thoughts when you started listening to the American Revolution series. Well, there's a there was a lot of information that I didn't know that uh, like how the uh, the founding fathers originally saw themselves. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I didn't know that they, they you know they they considered themselves as British. Um, what? No, 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 no. Okay, anyway, they considered themselves as British and British subjects, even mm -hmm. though uh, they didn't like the, the way things were going. And then it wasn't until like an ultimatum point to where it was like, you know what, forget it. We're just we're just declaring independence. Right. Um, that that's, that would probably be the most interesting or the, 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 mo the part that stood out the most for me. The first thing I thought when we started listening to it, for me, when I started listening to it, is when they hit you with the... They really didn't learn much about the American Revolution in school, <laughs> which makes a ton of sense and didn't surprise me, but I didn't think about it and it, I didn't see it coming. Yeah. Right. When they said that, I was like, oh, that makes tons of sense, but it's also also shocking. Yeah. At the same time, it's weird. Well, we don't learn anything. We don't learn much about British history or English history. We do learn... A decent amount, but it's the stuff like before the revolution and then World War II. It's the stuff that affects America. Yeah, basically. Right. So then I have some other thoughts that I thought would be good to, to discuss here. Do you have any things before we jump into mine? No, not really. I mean, I just <clears throat> um, that's that's where I, that's that that was the main sticking point for me is that you know I would assume the founding fathers were. Wanted to be independent from the get go. I believe that's maybe I didn't pay attention, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's, I it's did. Also, I you mean, just learned it a long time. Ago. Yeah, yeah, my, yeah, it was but, a long time. Because I remember ago. learning the story that w the way that they told it that way. Really, like they didn't want because oh, you learn they sent letters to the king imploring him to. I remember learning that stuff, but I, I feel like I got a pretty balanced opinion or teaching of the revolution and the founders in my history classes growing up. Well, I don't remember them. The, I don't remember the letters back and forth. It was big. They, they kind of like gloss through, you know, like rah, 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 Americana kind of thing. They kind of gl gloss sure. through a lot of the setup right. or the setup to the, the revolutionary sure. war and then jump straight into the revolutionary war. Right. And so the, the thing at the beginning that surprised me besides what we talked about is how important, how big of a war the French and Indian war. Oh, it was huge. See, because like yeah. growing up, that was the thing that was glossed over. Oh, I feel like like no. I learned. Oh, the French and Indian War happened. George Washington was on the good good guy side. We the 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 British and Americans won, and that's I didn't I didn't even I don't know that I even tied that into that's what got rid of all the French people out of out of the uh, out, out of, of North America. Yeah, I mean, well, that's the other thing. You know, you know, you know that. Uh, uh, 
George Washington was supposedly supposed to be executed or shot while he was leaving a fort. Uh, but a French officer said that he refused to shoot somebody in the back. I didn't hear that story. That's the, interesting. Yeah, that's I, I specifically remember that. But the, the right. French and Indian War, um, I mean, I, I mean, I, you know, I grew up watching movies like uh, um, Last of the Mohicans. I mean, that right. was. I mean, I, I guess right. if you wanted to talk about the French and Indian War in, in an American cinema, that would probably be the one movie that sticks out. At least modern movie, semi modern. Yeah, I mean, I can't think of another one, and that's a good point. I forgot about that movie, but I mean. One thing that they talked about, it, it almost seems like in British history, but well, that's because they won, I guess, too. But they called it the Seven Years' War. Yep. Was a bigger deal. Yeah, oh yeah. Right, because well, they, they ended up with Canada. They ended up with the colonies for a while. And they ended up with uh, the Caribbean. Well, yeah. They were able to keep those possessions. Well, the Caribbean was taken from Spain. Right. The... Um, uh, the Canada, Canada was taken from the French. Well, I'm pretty sure there were some French colonies in the Caribbean. Like, oh yeah, for sure. But yeah. I'm just, I mean, it was mostly Spanish until the Armada fell apart, right. uh, or <laughs> the Armada was destroyed. So let me put it that way: the Armada was destroyed. Right. Uh, but after the you know the Spanish Armada was Armada was destroyed, there was pretty much not there was there wasn't as much what Spanish influence. I, I let me uh, guess, and then we'll look it up. You can look it up. 1682. Oof, I no, I, I would say seventeen hundreds. I feel like it's sixteen eighty something, and it's one of those. It's one of those dates that sticks in my head that I learned in school the Spanish Armada and the date, and I don't remember the exact date. Oh my God, fifteen eighty eight. Oh, I was <laughs> yeah, we're way hundred off. years <laughs> off. I was way closer than you. <laughs> yeah, I know you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but that's I mean. <laughs> Right. Oh, I feel like that's really interesting. And so, I have some general thoughts about the series as a whole, but do you have any other, what, what, like on the actual revolution, like on the fighting thoughts? Um, well, I thought it was interesting that, uh, you know, that, that Tom, Adam, and Dominic um, reviewed some of the tactics uh, of the English, of the, the British, the Redcoats. Right. You know, how they were, and then in a number of scenarios, they were attacking uphill. Right. You know, they thought if you could take the large cities, um, the mm-hmm. war would basically be over. Um, yeah. It, it, it's interesting. I mean, especially, you know, especially in modern day tactics, modern day military tactics, you, mm-hmm. you always want to have the high ground. Because it's much easier to shoot down upon your opponent than it is to shoot up or charge up a hill. Because you're you're spent by the time you get up the hill. And I think that's always yeah, for sure. For even sure. Before guns. It well, was... yeah, but it's it's. I mean, still, it's easier to shoot yeah, shoot but down it's than it is to shoot, shoot up. arrows or throw spears or even point, point swords. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I just thought that was interesting. Yep. Um, you know, and then I, I, one subject. I mean, I, I want to kind of jump into since we brought that up is. The British knew that they it was a war for hearts and minds, and I don't know if this is going to kind of cut into to, to one of the topics you. Yeah, to let's bring come up. back to that. Okay. okay, I have some strategy questions that I thought were interesting. Okay, sure. I never really thought about it until I was listening to this series. But how hard did they try to divide and conquer? <sighs> like the, the colonies. Were different enough that you would have thought the British could have pried a few of them off to, to to get them to turn. And I think maybe they they thought they could do it, but it seems like they didn't try very hard. I wouldn't say it's they didn't try. I don't know. I think that's what I'm saying. I think I they were know. focusing on the largest populations or or centers of population. Right. But so why try to turn South Carolina? When, you know, in Charleston, when you don't need to. Because by doing that, it makes it easier to conquer the other ones. Because that's how they've always handled... That's how civilized cultures have always handled other bat- battles against other other peoples, right? But this was another culture, or <clears throat> a similar cultured people, right? But they were still colonies that had different cultures. So yep. it seemed like my thought was, why didn't... And maybe they did. And this is something I hope... If Tom and Dominic and Adam listen to this, maybe they could enlighten us or I can do some research. But, like, 
Did they go to South Carolina and be like, hey, join us. We'll make you guys the, 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 the favored colony. Help us take these guys, you know. And if they didn't, why didn't they? Because it didn't seem sporting? Uh, Is it a whole heart? It was like, these are our buddies. These are Protestants. We're going to play with the gloves on. I can't really, I, I can't really speak for that. I, I would yeah, just have to it's say, it's interesting to think about, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would just have to say that because they did that in India, right? They used other <laughs> Indians to beat the Indians that they were rebelling and things like that, right? The British, yeah, but they, they worked with certain tribes against the other tribes. It, it, but as different as the American colonies might have seen each other, right? I don't think the British would have seen us in that kind of light, and then you know, and like the the many shades of gray, right? Um, I think they saw, you know, we the Americans were were portrayed as you know Englishmen, but just on a different continent, basically, in their right. minds. Even though you know, if you go to Boston, you'd have. You know the rabble rousers, and if you go to New York, you'd have something a little more um, gentrified or, or uh, leaning towards the king or, or king and country when it comes to England. Right. Um, and they even actually uh, they mentioned that in uh, I believe that was uh, well, one of them, episode three forty nine, if I remember correctly. But right. um, you know, basically it was to isolate Boston, but then keep you know New York. Um, but yeah, I. I I don't know if, if if the British actually saw saw the many shades that we see ourselves at. Because if you're not exposed to it and you're not around it, then how do you... But then they were talking about how they thought Boston was the problem. Sure, sure. Right. And if you thought Boston was the problem, it seems like you could have done a little more to try to get the other people. Like start... <laughs> okay, when you're doing the acts, right? Yeah. Help all you, I mean, if, if it had been done in hindsight, right, the thing would have been to do is make that terrible act against Boston, which they did. But then instead of end up doing it against the rest of the colonies too, give them special favors to really divide them, right? Yeah. Make them favored colony status and give them a bunch of shit and really turn them to your side. They could have tried that. I don't. I mean, maybe they did. As far as I know, they did not. I think you're looking at this. I think that type of, of thought process goes with a modern day information exchange. The information exchange no. back then was nowhere Dude, near. That was always nowhere near. the way they did it, though. Yeah, but the, the information exchange between... I mean, the Americans did that to the freaking Indians, the Native Americans. That's how we beat them in the first place. Yeah, but we had direct knowledge. We right, didn't we have closer, knowledge we from 2,000 miles away, right? So, you right, know, but the British did it in India. Yeah, but they... Because all you do is you tell the general, go do this, and then send him over there and authorize him to do that. Yeah, right? but you can't compare India to the Americas, and I'm going to... And the reason why is India, even today, is fractionalized. I mean, you, you, there's, right. you know... And that, I guess that's the thing, right? The American colonies, as different as they seem on the inside, like you were saying, I guess, as different as they seem to us from the outside, they probably didn't seem very different. Well, yeah, but India, is, you can't even count. They have, you know, one, between one state and India to another, they have their own language. I mean, it's not like they're that's speaking their own language no, within that's the a, 13, that's you know, a great 13 point. colonies. That's a great point. Um, I mean, they have different cultures. They have different beliefs. I mean... Uh, it, it's it, it, interesting if you looked at if you I mean I understand the the, right. the comparison but it's it's just not apples to apples, and that's how the caste system works so well in India that right. doesn't work. Um, anyway, the, no, it, it no the caste system is also ancient. Yeah, I, yeah. No, you're right. That's a good point though. Those cultures, India is so huge, with many diverse peoples in it in the right. same country that all. Identify as Indian, but they. It's well, also they I identify don't even know as their that they, state. Especially, I don't know that they did. Back I, then, <clears throat> they probably did not. Right? I'm not sure. They probably did. I wouldn't know. I mean, nationalism is relatively new. Sure. Historically. But if you live in the country of India, you know, right. even though you're your own state. But I just think it's interesting that. Right. You know, the Indian states are, are as diverse between one and another as another separate country. Right. 
Um, but so, it, we, and we don't have that here. In the, we didn't have that with 13 colonies, colonies to mm-hmm. that extent. Right. And uh, then, I guess, is interesting because how important the Caribbean was. Oh, I mean, not just for sugar. Not just for sugar cane. I mean, but the slave trade. A huge thing. The slave well, trade. Well, the slave trade went through the Caribbean because they needed the slaves there for the sugar. Well, it was you a- listen to that hardcore history, um, the episode that was a couple ago that was about the, the slave trade. The, yeah, addicted the to bondage. I think that was no, I believe that was the old one about slavery, and then okay. he did the new one. But it might have been. Oh, just look it up. Yeah, I'll look it up. But the the Dominican, especially, I'm not Dominican. The Caribbean, especially, needed they needed the slaves because the natives couldn't do that work. Human resources. Human resources. Thank yeah. you. So the one that that was. I mean, I, I, I never, growing up in America, it never occurred to me that America wasn't the crown of the colonies, the important colony here, until they said it. And then as soon as they said it, it tied in with a bunch of other stuff that I've read and, and heard. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Yep. Right? We, ton of sense. We had our place, just not the star. We right. Went the gold because star. Then we weren't bringing in all the money then. Because we, there was still... Sugar was so stupid valuable. Yep. So it ties something that I learned when I was in New Orleans. I went there for a guy's trip with my in-laws this uh, past winter. And when we did a tour of the Mississippi and we saw the sugar factory. Okay. Domino's sugar factory. It's still there. It's been there for hundreds of years. Like They don't even... It, it was just wild to learn about how much sugar affected New Orleans. Oh, I... I right, I, and it was such a cash crop. Yep. Such a cash crop. Well, it still is. I mean, sugar is... I, it right. still is. Well, before now they before put it sugar, in everything. Before sugar, it was molasses. And before molasses... I mean, right, because you could get molasses, you know. Yep. And then you go to that Boston molasses explosion. You ever read about that? No. <laughs> a big molasses vat just like exploded and ran the city streets with molasses. <laughs> oh, it did tons of damage. It was terrible. Oh, for sure. But right. look it up sometime. I can't, I don't remember enough of the details to give it, go into it here anyway. But it's crazy story. But okay, so then we could get into the bigger th- plot. Well, the, of the American Revolution. But since uh, one thing, sure. since we brought up what the U.S. or what the what the thirteen colonies did deliver, it was tobacco, uh, and to a lighter degree, cotton, um, and then foodstuffs. Don't forget foodstuffs. Sure. Um, but it wasn't until later, you know, like pre Civil War area. Well, so like the eighteen hundreds when. Uh, American exports really started to kick off. Like, especially with the cotton gin, the invention of the cotton gin you mentioned before. Um, right. And, uh, you know, England was buying a lot of our cotton. Um, tobacco was always a number, an, you know, a large cash crop. Um, but the cotton gin was invented after the revolution. And that may be one thing, one of the reasons why they saw the Caribbean as as the bigger cash crop. Sure. Or the bigger crown, the bigger piece, right? Jewel in the crown. Right, <laughs> because if it was, the cotton gin had already been invented. And yep. not only invented, its effect was shown to what it could do and what it, it would make cotton be so more, more val- much more valuable. Maybe they would have struggled harder to hold on to those southern count- well, colonies. Well, I, I could argue, I, you know, I would be willing to argue this with, well, I'd be willing to make this point and an argument that the reason why the Civil War started... I know we're getting off in the weeds, but the reason why the Civil War started was because the South had a lot of power and money due to cotton production or cotton harvesting. And once England started buying cotton from Egypt or or harvesting cotton in Egypt, there was no need for the southern states or no... there, There was no more... Um, there was less of a market. There was yeah. There was less of a market for the southern mm-hmm. states. The southern states were losing power. The north started industrializing, uh, which which further alienated the south because the south was making all the rules for the most part because we, we were agriculturally driven. 
Um, and then the North really started taking. I think it was pretty it evenly balanced. I, up until the Civil War, yeah, I think the South evenly balanced. And why the Civil War happened is because that balance was getting more, more and more in favor of well, the North. No, it of was, that's relation. the way the Southern states saw it, right? But I think that's the truth. I, I don't know. They, there was a big fight every time a new territory wanted to enter the Union. Was it going to be a slave state or oh, not? That's right. another one. Yeah, but. Let's not get into the Civil War. Yeah, right? sorry. We're, we're talking Although about the Revolutionary War. Although you could look at the Civil War as a continuation of the American Revolution. Mm. I think it's not necessarily wrong to look at that as a continuation of it. And that, that brings us to the, an idea that I wanted to, to express here. And that's the, the British struggle to abolish slavery like but they took a long time for that movement to pick up in britain and then they when they finally did they put so much money and energy into trying to stop the slave trade people i mean they lost a lot of man a men fighting to stop the slave trade and america fought a civil war where they lost a lot of resources and capital to stop slavery yep I look at America and Britain in that effort, to me, it kind of shows the common heritage. And not just that, like the common bond between the two countries is the revolution really was kind of like a a hiccup in what otherwise went on to be one of the gr- great greatest alliances, alliances in, human, in, 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 in nations. That of nations that you can think of, right? Yep. Yep. I mean, look at look at the I I, I other than eighteen twelve, right? Again, <laughs> so you got those two little. Hiccups. That's not talking about eighteen twelve, all right? Yeah. Yeah. You got those two little hiccups. I wonder what the British call the War of eighteen twelve. They think they they as far as I'm aware the the British well, they burned the DC. British yeah I know but the British so maybe believe, they did win the no well, you just burned a building no. They, they 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 did the, a lot Napoleon, of damage. Napoleon burned Moscow. Okay, he didn't win. That's a good point. I mean, you can burn the capital, but I don't know if their goal was to take the whole area or not. Like, if they accomplished their goals and we didn't accomplish our goals, then didn't they win? Did were we still standing? Our goal, you no, know, because that wasn't the goal. The goal was to to. Well, again. I'm not, I don't know enough to know what I don't know about the War of 1812. But those two, so Britain had started, they, you know, they had, they have their, um, <clears throat> this movement towards individual liberty. Sure. Okay. And a movement towards, or away from absolute monarchy. Yep. You know, and they had the Magna Carta. And then, and then they have the Glorious Revolution, and they have this whole Enlightenment tradition. That America is really just another extension of that. Well, and it was an extension too far for the Britons at the time. Yeah, but that, you know, uh, the guys bring up the same point as, you know, the Americans or the Founding Fathers created basically a Roman system. So that it wasn't... I mean, it, it's not a uh, it's not a, a monarchy. It is you know for for it was a liberties republic. you know, in a republic for individual liberties. Right, but like They're they liberty. talked about, look at how many people were allowed to participate in yep. the actual governing. Sure, that is. I mean, in Rome, that wasn't the case. They had the populace, the the that the the people the the people did have their their delegates, but it was much less. Much less than what we have here. And our system, while based on Rome, was still heavily influenced by the English system. Oh, for sure. But I, but can you can say the English system was heavily influenced by the Roman system. But I will take... Because Parliament is still... I mean, Parliament right. was... Listen, I don't know. Maybe you still had a monarchy right. with a Parliament. Sure. Right. And the Romans didn't. But... One thing I will take umbrage about that they talked about is... Calling our president a king. Yep. Several times. Like basically just a king that's elected. Yep. Well. 
maybe, and, and I, I guess because I don't think about kings the way they think about kings in, in Britain. Yeah. Because they think about the king like the way they have kings now, which they don't do much. But and we, they they've been pretty neutered. Well, one one historical fact that I I recall is they want is the people wanted George Washington to be a king or to remain a president for yes you know for his entire lifespan. Well, they they didn't. Nobody said that, right? It was at least I don't think so. It was the common understanding <clears throat> was he could have just kept getting elected. Yeah, but he didn't want that. Right, he he didn't believe in well, that type of system. Well, and that's why they talked about the, yeah I, how George the Third and I remember hearing that many times. Yep, yeah. right. How he said if jo- if George Washington does that, then he'll be the greatest man in history. Yeah, but he didn't want to do that. But well, no, but saying if he him. actually gives up and doesn't run, well, right? If he doesn't run for re-election for a third term and steps down when he could easily win, that makes him exceptional. And I believe that is true. What is the first emperor of Rome? That did the same, something similar. I forgot his name. Was it Caligula? It wasn't Caligula. No, no, no. no it was, uh, who the hell, who was it? Um, no, I know. It wasn't an emperor. Though. It was well, a general. He, yeah, he and took. And he went home to be a farmer. Correct. Correct. Right. And, and, and they, I, they mentioned that in the podcast, too. Yeah, I, did they? I yeah. don't remember hearing that. They were that talking part. about um, the Roman tradition of, but they didn't mention the, uh, the general by name. It wasn't, it was before the empire, and I think it was during the Republic. <sighs> what was his name? It was the only reason he took. Dictatorial control over Rome is because Rome was being was it? Oh, you're talking about Sulla? No, I don't think it because was Sulla. It, it, he kind of played it like that. But anyway, no. Anyway, we're yeah, yeah we're too far in the woods again, right? Once again, but so it's, it, it is. It's funny how it just did. But George Washington did the right thing. Well, yeah. yeah. And then you know, up until Teddy Roosevelt, no. FDR, FDR. Sorry, okay. up until FDR. He was the only president to serve more than... I mean, nobody else had served more than two terms. Because Washington set that tradition and nobody would go against it. Yeah. No, except right. for FDR. Yes. <laughs> with with his fourth term. consequences. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So then... But I, what I was saying, though, is I, I think one way to look at our history is really just a continuation of the British history with influences from all these other places, too. Right, positive influences from all these other countries in Europe where we said they sent people over. So it's like they took the British traditions and this British founding and then added in the best parts of all this other stuff. We took good, good parts of the culture from the Native Americans too. Like it Some really them. does. Yeah, man. Like there's a lot of all of that in, 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 into what made America, America. And so... It's like a continuation of the British experiment. That's the way I like to think about it now. You know, when you just said that, what the first thing that that thought about that I that I I could put kind of two and two together mm-hmm. is in Native American uh, tribes, like when they would have like a conference, right? When mm-hmm. they would talk amongst themselves, everybody could could talk for as long as they wanted mm-hmm. about what they thought, right? Mm-hmm. Well, isn't that kind of like a filibuster? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in in modern you know in modern well, politics it's it's there's kind of, a lot it's a filibuster there's a lot of Native American influences on American culture that oh. we just we live here yeah so we just take it for granted yeah we don't even think about it but there is a lot and I think it it would and maybe there are books on this and I need to look into it but if there isn't there should be right because like if you look at the whole frontiersman culture th- those people like. Daniel Boone and David or David Crockett, right? Those guys were heavily influenced by Native American culture. Yep, heavily, and then they in turn influenced American culture. Yep, right. A lot of people were like that through through yeah, the ages, for sure. And well, there was that, but the Frederick Jackson Turner's thesis was how the 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 presence of the frontier made American exceptional. Yep. Made America exceptional, right? 
Well, okay, I mean, but Gwen Dyer even brings it up in in hardcore in his hardcore history interview with Dan Carlin. Mm-hmm. You know, of the, you know, there's a lot more where that came from because there was always explorers and, and room for Gross. you know mountain men or, or explorers to to go you know all the way Adventure. to the west coast. Adventure, yeah, right. and 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 <clears throat> somewhere to send those people that had the desire to roam or to better themselves. Yep, there was somewhere for them to do that without. Taking advantage of the other citizens in our regular or in 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 the in the where they were from. I have to throw a question out there. Sure. Especially for for our English counterparts here. Uh, parts. Do they? That's a bit rich. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> we're just three <laughs> studied <laughs> historians, <laughs> two idiots <laughs> with that, a camera that, that like history. and microphone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you think they played Oregon Trail growing up? I really didn't play Oregon Trail. Oh my God! Come on! I mean, I played it like twice. I'm just curious. I remember. Do you think they played Oregon Trail? Zero percent chance they even know what it is. (laughs) There's no way Tom Holland knows what Oregon Trail is. I I guarantee if he still if he ever even turns this on. Yep. But if he's listening or watching this right now, he's googling it because there's no way he knows what Oregon Trail is. but I hope I'm wrong. Guys. I hope people in Britain growing up were playing that that crappy computer game. Dude, what do you mean? That was an awesome game. It was terrible. Guys, if you haven't played it, I highly recommend it. No, you're, you're going to hate it. <laughs> Here's a piece of Americana for you. If you haven't heard of it. If you have heard of it. If anybody watching this in Britain or in another country besides America has heard of Oregon Trail, please let us know because I will be surprised. <laughs> I'm just curious. I feel like that was a very specifically American thing. I, but we, everybody wrong. played it. Everybody okay. played it. Every school kid played so it. So then one thing, let's get back to yeah, the sorry. series that I had. No, no, don't apologize. That's this an is, interest, that is an this interesting is do. sidebar. It is, it is what we do. Um, one thing that I wanted to talk about is, so we, we were just talking about the... The slavery and how the British and, and the Americans had to fight wars to, to stop slavery. And they mentioned Patrick Henry. And Patrick Henry owned slaves. Yep. Right. But he gave that impassioned speech. Give me liberty, give me death. And if you haven't already checked out, a few years ago, Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs did a, the way I heard it about where he read that speech. Yep. And he's got that great voice. Yep. And he did it like he read it with passion. It still gives you chills. It still gives you chills. And, and go ahead, sorry. Well, what I was going to say is and here is this guy who owns people, who who is okay owning people, giving that speech and my thought there is and they kind of kind of touched on this in the series, but the reason he could be so Passionate. Passionate and understand so clearly what was worth fighting for about liberty is because every day he saw how shitty it was to not have it. Well, and here's one thing, and, and I I don't believe the guys mentioned this in, in any of those episodes. The founding fathers knew that slavery was wrong and it needed to be overturned. Now, let me let me say not all of them, sure, but many There's of them. There's at least credible evidence that Jefferson and Washington, they, and and a lot of the other ones, they they knew, knew was, slavery needed to to end, but they but didn't they know could how to not do. have kept America together. Yep, and got rid of slavery, and they didn't know how to do it. And I mean, they, they thought the better part was to build something that would allow that to go forward in the future, while preserving America from becoming Europe. And that's the beautiful thing about the Constitution. It is not... It's a living document. No. It is a living document. No. No. It is, because you can make amendments to it. That's not a living document. It is an amendable document. Okay. When they say living document, they mean something totally different. But I mean, you know, something that is... It is editable. It is a changeable document. Correct. But living document means something totally different. Well... It's okay. Keep going. Well, that's how I mean it. Is it like... Right. it's not set in stone. These, you know, it does set the rules, or at least some rules. And it's amendable, but it's not easy to amend. Those are Correct. both good. But that has to be done by what, you know, 60. A majority of the country has to agree to amend the Constitution. Right. But 
Anyway. So let's go back to what we were just no, but like to them it was it was worth staying together. Yep. That was that was as important as 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 letting slavery die out. Okay. And if you think about what's happened in in Europe before the revolution and since the revolution, there's a good argument that they're right. Look at all the wars. Yep. That they had, they had just seen Europe go through, I mean, hundreds of years of wars. Yep. And then what happened the next couple hundred years? Same thing. More basically. war, more war, and then the worst wars in human history. Yep. By far, right? If America had not stayed together as a United States, maybe that's what happens here. Uh, yeah, as a republic, as a united well, republic. No, we are United States. Yeah, I know. That's but, literally in the name. No, I understand. But. If we hadn't stayed together as a federal with a, a federal government with states' rights and federalism system, yep. if that system hadn't been in place, maybe we just become Europe 2.0. And oh, yeah, right we'd now, be warring against ourselves. Virginia would have been fighting against Georgia, and Georgia would have been fighting against, against Ohio. Yeah. Well, you know those Ohio people. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> who's to say uh, that we wouldn't be just as as messed up as Europe was for the last four or five hundred years? Oh, we probably would have been. And that's what the founders were trying to prevent. It, the funny thing is, you bring that up. It, it, why doesn't Canada have a well-known military? They don't need it. Exactly. Why doesn't Mexico have a well-known military? Because they don't need it. They're in our, I mean, and that's just. But, I just yeah. Since you brought that up, I just want no, to throw I that out there. No, but I think that was. Really, I mean, they do. That have, was really not related at all. Yes, it was. No, yes, it was not even a little. Because we could have been fighting against Canada and Mexico. Well, no, but we would. But no, it wouldn't have been we doing it. It would have been the border states. Constantly fighting with the providence provinces sure. in Canada sure. and the British and all that nonsense. Right, the fact that we were able to stay the United or become the United States of America was a credit to the founding fathers, and was probably has done much more benefit, gave much more benefit to the world than had we not done that. Oh, for, I'm not. That's and well, that's that's just a point. Yeah, that I like to point out because nowadays it's very easy and very common for people to say, "Oh, the founding fathers owned slaves. They're idiots, racists." Yeah. And everything they did is trash. And I don't think the rest of history did that. I thought they had a, a pretty fair and balanced take on this. Yeah. I, I But I, I, you're speaking more to like... Yeah, the 1619 Project. Yeah. Shit like that. Or the... It's funny. The when modern. we started this, I told Scott, try not to swear. And then now I've sworn three times and you said I've sworn once. <laughs> <laughs> Which is odd. Because usually I, I'm the one with the... Oh, I thought that was funny though. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... We're talking about Patrick Henry. It just stuck in my head. Okay. The story about Patrick Henry, though, right? Yep. He saw every day a real-life example of what it meant to not be free. Yep. So it got to the point where, to him, after seeing that, it was worth anything to not have be that. Now... What would have been the best response to seeing that and having those emotions is, well, crap, we need to help these people out. Yeah. But humans aren't that simple. And they're not often not going to see past the inconvenience to them enough, right? Like, that, that's... that's it, we like to say we would do hard things, right? And we, and we do. But... When you doing something hard that you don't need to do, like give up all your slaves when you don't need to, that is asking a lot of of a, of a human. It just it just is. Yeah. When there's a whole culture saying, "Hey, this is just what's always been." Yeah. It's asking a lot. That's all. Well, and and you know, it's it's funny because uh, Dan Carlin brought this up in Human Resources. You know, how do you make life easier? I mean, how did they make life easier right. then? It was, it was you paid for somebody to right. do the, this work for you. So it's really easy now to condemn people who own slaves when we Correct. have machines and indoor plumbing and everything is done already 
for yeah. us that the slaves would have done. We have mechanicalized or automated those processes. So now yeah. it's easy to see, man, these lazy asses couldn't just, they had to keep, they had to have slaves with, with terrible people. And yeah, it's it's an awful thing. And I, I, I do think that most of the people who own slaves, or not most maybe, but a lot of them probably deep down knew it was wrong. Well, you, you but remember, that's humans are not perfect. You remember where the term "the daily grind" comes from, right? No. So every morning, uh, let's just say, like a you know a peasant woman or wife would would have to grind two hours of of uh, wheat to make the day's flour to make the day's bread. Right. So that's what they call the daily grind. So every day, oh, right, you need two right. hours to grind this down to make the bread. And then so, what else could you be getting done with that two hours? I, but that's why they call it the daily grind. So that, that's right. my point. By um, automating those processes, then you don't have to have peasants or slaves do it. Exactly. Um, or you do it yourself. and then But it, but that doesn't give you time to do or things. Or now you could do it in 20 seconds in your food processor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> your bread maker. Literally. Yeah. You, you no, just, you got to grind the flour first. So you do that in your food processor. So it yeah. takes 10 seconds. Well, you don't even need to do that anymore. You just put the flour, all right, the ingredients into a bread maker. Right, but I'm saying even if you maker. didn't have flour that you could buy at the store. Yeah. We all have something in our house that could make flour out of almost anything. Uh, for sure. That you can just grind anything in a few seconds and yep. have flour. Yep. Any wheat or, you know, that agricultural product. It's it's anyway. it's fascinating. Um, so. So yeah, I, one thing that the guys did bring up, and that this is this is circling back, you know, it's to Paul Revere when when Paul Revere said, you know, the the. The British are coming. Well, yeah. they, they never said the British are coming. He wouldn't have said the British. He might have said the Redcoats are coming. Or you know, they're coming. Yeah. But it wouldn't have been. But um, I, I, I think it is a little, a little silly to get lost in the, the weeds on that. Like, who cares? What he said. What he did. <laughs> who cares? It's a great effing they're story. They're coming to take your guns. The, it's the, a great. The British are coming, it's a great right? effing story. Right. The midnight ride of Paul Revere. Like, did it happen? Who knows. But it's awesome. <laughs> just one if by land, two if by sea, all that stuff. That's part of the. That's part of history that is makes it fun. Yeah, those stories. They're not always real, and they're always not always accurate. But they make it interesting. So we got to get back to. Um, we got to get back to, the hearts and minds. Where are we at with hearts and right. minds? Right. So it, it, the Revolutionary War, the English knew. That they couldn't just go no holds barred, right? You know. Uh, well, no. You say they knew they couldn't. They couldn't. They knew they couldn't. I don't think they knew they couldn't. They, they knew they I couldn't. Think they wouldn't. But they knew they yeah because the, they knew they couldn't because if they did, then they would no longer have a relation, a, a steady relationship with the United but States. But that didn't or bother the them colonies. in other places. You're right because, because they, they were didn't. Catholics. Or they were savages. Because they saw themselves as fellow... Because right. Englu- they saw us as they fellow They didn't Englishmen. see us as other, so then we, they couldn't fight us like the other. Yeah. And that's a human trait, too. So, but right? my, my, my point is, you know, could they... And could they have won if they did go the no holds barred, barred route? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mm. argue, I'm going to give you my premise, and I'm going to say no. Okay. Because I think that would have just enraged... More Americans or more colonists, and that's against always, the British. Cause. That's always the risk, and I think that's why they 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 knew from the start that they couldn't go with a scorched earth policy. They had to go with a hearts and minds policy. Now there are other places and other times where it wouldn't have enraged them. It would have scared people, and they would have they would have given up. True, but I don't think that is an American trait. And maybe it's not an American trait because it's not a British trait. Yeah. That's, I mean, uh, how could you Nazis. argue? You can't even argue that. Look at the Nazis and look at that. That That's one of the things the I have in my notes. Right? Yeah. The British spent so much treasure to defeat the Nazis. Yeah. When they didn't really need to. Like, they could have just let Europe go to hell and made a treaty with Germany. Yeah. Hitler thought they would. Yeah. But they didn't because they're Britain. They're British. Yeah. And, and and the thing that makes America even more like that is because the people that started this country were people that were like, 
we got to get the hell away from all these people and go do go over here and do something. They had to go. They they were people willing to try something crazy. Some people. But, you have to remember. No, no. The, the no. state, the colonies were initially established by by criminals. I, and, I mean, that's what they. Um, no, no. Just some seriously. colonies were. The, no, do not. No, dude. Come on. Most of them weren't. Not in not in America. No, in America. No, it was the no. it was the Australia. It was the first Australia. No. Yes. No. Yes. Okay. So, what about the Pilgrims? The, were they okay. convicts? No. No. The they Quakers. Were, they were. They were. The Quakers they were, were convicts. Leaving, they were leaving Jamestown because of religious. Cr- pr- uh, so the people that came here were either looking for a better life, or looking for a, a better future. By making their fortune, but a lot of criminals did come over in the in the early days. Ah. A lot of them were shipped over in the early days. Maybe I don't know that that's true. Uh, I can't remember that if that's true. We'll have to look it up. There's a lot of the southern states, by the way. <sighs> Maybe I don't. Plymouth Rock and the Pilgrims. Okay, great. Sure, Good. but I'll then give it, you that one. The, you know it, the point though. The point I was making though sorry. is the people. Yeah. America has a really stubborn streak to them. Oh, I know. Right, but the reason we do is because we have the DNA of stubborn people who are willing to get on a boat. A lot of us do, right? Well, yeah, but that doesn't... Because even if the people who came over in the 1800s or the 1900s... There you go. Those Italians, That's those the, Irish... Yep, the Scottish. All of those people were getting on a boat. And now the people who come over here from the Middle East, oh. they go through this... They give up... Or Central these, and South America. All of them, right? They're giving up something... To try for a better life. Yep. And that is a trait that is great to have in your country. Oh, for sure. To have your population have those genes. And it dis- it hurts the countries they're leaving. Yep. Because they're losing some of their best people. Yep. They're losing the staying powers. Right? They're, they're, losing they're losing some of losing the, the best fighters. people to yeah. come here. Yep. And they've been losing those people around the world, basically. For oh. the last two hundred and well, four hundred years, the poles did the same thing. The, but maybe you, forever, actually, I shouldn't say that because if you look at human history, it's all about migrating, and those are probably the ones that are doing most of the exploring anyway. So I guess that's a human thing. Well, and in that's, general, but that's the thing about you know coming here to the U.S. You're right; it's it's for people that are optimistic, that want to build a life of their own, that want to get out from the heel of uh, you know uh, of whatever oppression they might be under. Right. Um, you know, uh, Brett. I mean, I, I don't. No, wanna, I know. I don't want to go I too know, far but, in the woods. But, but I, I, exactly, and that that. So they talked about this in the podcast too. Like the whole, and this is what I'd always heard growing up. Right, a third, a third, a third. Right, a third of the people wanted the revolution. A third were loyalists, and a third were like on the fence. Yep. Or there's just your, like staying out of it. That is your benefit. But then Arnold. what he said that was interesting is, is like, yeah, maybe as a whole. But if you look at like Boston, it's like eighty percent. Yeah, and then in the col- in some of the southern colonies, it was like eighty percent against. No, yeah. which is another reason why it's amazing that they were able to stay together. Well, right. I mean, there but there was strength in numbers. I mean, you look at the old uh, right. Uh, uh, but they they didn't have any defections. Yeah, but that's you, impressive. You look at the old story. You know, you can break you can break one arrow oh, by yeah. itself, but if you have a bundle of arrows, but how you many can't peoples break them. have been able to pull that off? Oh, none. I, well, very few. Very, very few. few. Very America few. did. Um, yep, we did. The Mongol tribes did that too, but yeah. after they were, you know, they defeated themselves. But whatever, they conquered themselves. But yeah, the same thing. Okay. <clears throat> any any other things you want to talk about in this series before I give some final thoughts or what's yeah, there's one. The there's podcast? one more thing. So the French involvement. Now it was. Give me a French accent. I, I you don't have one of those. In your back I don't pocket? know if I have a. I don't either. Well, yeah. this is not how I can't even do it. I no, that was good. I can't. Uh, no, that is exactly what I think of when I hear a French. When uh, I when I want to hear a French person, that's the accent that sticks in my so, head. Whether that's a real French accent, yeah, I don't yeah. know, but it sounded French to me. Uh, sorry if you're French, but uh, yeah, sorry if you're French. But uh, so anyway, you know the the French involvement. What my understanding was was the French didn't really get involved until I know Lafayette was was always a, a prominent figure, but uh, the French really didn't get involved with the American Revolution until we had started or until we had proved the American colonies had proved 
that we could fight against the Redcoats. Uh, that that or you know against. Well, why the would British. they? Right? If if it was going to be a cake, why would they? Why would they waste their capital? Well, they wouldn't want to. I mean, I that's that right? was my impression. But you know, according to um, you know, uh, the rest is history. You know, the the French had constant involvement. I don't think I I did not get. That I got that impression. I got that. See, impression. I didn't get that. I didn't get that at all. Okay. I the way they described it to me seemed pretty historically accurate to what I learned. Right. It took a little bit to get the to convince the French that we could actually hang with the British, and then once they got in, basically it was over. Yeah. Well, it was it was going to be a done deal as soon as the French, and then you get the Spanish, and it, and it's over. Right. Well, and that's that's the other thing about the Americans winning the Revolutionary War. I'm going to put "winning" in quotes here because. What do you think we lost? No, no, we won. But I'm going to tell well, you why'd you put it in quotes? Because hold on, it's friggin', <laughs> because friggin' communist. Right if here. it wasn't for the Spanish uprisings or the Spanish wars, and then the French going back to war with the English. There's a possibility that England could have diverted more resources to quelling the revolt in the colonies rather than fighting the French and the Spanish again. Oh, yeah, but we won. But the reason, but the, for sure, we would have had an infinitely harder time is if the French and Spanish had not helped. And I don't know that we would have been able to pull it off. Well, it, At least not to the extent we did. Well, Maybe we would have won more rights. But I doubt we would have won independence. Yeah. But, like but, maybe we become like Canada is now, but then. Well, right? Maybe. And I and I and I don't think that's a good thing. No. Thank God for the French. <laughs> At least the help they get. I mean but No, I mean that was that that was huge. It's funny because it feels like nowadays the French have become a punchline. Yeah. But like, well, they, they 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 fought the Germans to a standstill in World War One. The they weren't cakewalks then, so they get trucked once. All right, they didn't they didn't do well against the Germans a bunch, but they only really got trucked or housed one time. World War Two, and they can't live it down. Well, it's, like remember that old thing you would go to Google and type in French military victories. And it would pop up. The first site would pop up was, did you mean French military defeats? <laughs> and it was a fake website that. that made it look like Google was auto-correcting you too. Yeah, I don't remember Oh, that. yeah, that I was a hilarious that. bit. And it's like, Napoleon kind of kicked a lot of ass. Uh, he didn't kind of kick a lot of yeah. ass. He kicked a lot of ass. Yeah. But, but that's not my, my, my point. The point I'm trying to make, and you know what? I, I, let me expand on that. I think the French have lost their martial... Spirit. Well, most of them have. I, I Mo- we have, have too. I, Who hasn't in the West? Um, I mean, I, but it takes it take t- those think, things. I those things go arguable. into hibernation. I think that's arguable. Well, I think in places like America or Britain, they go into hibernation because life's are too they good. gone? Probably not. No, life. But too is good. it gone for now? Yes, life's. But too look good. at nine eleven, right? Yeah, right. You um, get attacked, and then everybody's like, oh. F this, let's get going. Strap them on and let's go. Yeah, and then and then well, after. And I'm not saying that all the things that happened after that were good. I'm just saying. Well, no. You I, get punched in the face, and then all of a sudden, you're, you're putting the gloves back on, and you're going you're going into the fight. Which you know, and, and sorry guys, we we're really going off here, but it's funny to me since you bring up 9/11. 80 percent of the country was fine with going to war with somebody. We didn't know who. 80 percent of the country was pro war. Well, at that we point. were assuming. And I remember this is that the people in charge knew who the right people to yeah, go to war. Yeah, no, were. no, I'm not disagreeing. And they kind of did at first. Yeah. Well, we knew who did it. I mean, they came out well, with a video. You say that, we but did. like, we kind of let the Saudis off the hook. Yeah. Because yeah. they have all the oil, so yeah. we're just like, well, Afghanistan. Yeah. No. Right? It's, it's where is Osama bin Laden? Right. It's Afghanistan. But like, who was the one that was doing a lot of that stuff? A lot of the Saudis. Right. Yeah. But anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Last point about the American Revolution series of the rest is history. I thought it was hilarious that they kept talking about how there would be no American listeners left and that they would hate it. Because I thought it was a pretty balanced approach. Well, I mean, if, 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 you're, if you're talking about your rah-rah Americana Texan, then maybe they would probably turn that shit off, stuff off after the first five, ten minutes. People who don't um, have a feel for nuance? Probably. That that's that would be my argument, you know. Oh, you're trashing the American, Amer- you're trashing America. Can't right. have it. 
Right. Uh, you know, that's, you know, it's I, not trashing America. I thought, America. It, was a, I thought it's just it was a pretty fair take. A, it's just a different perspective on America. Right. I thought it was a pretty fair take. I do, too. I do, too. I found it, I, I found it fascinating to hear the British perspective. I hope anybody listening to this or watching this enjoys hearing the American perspective of the British perspective. <laughs> and then if somebody wants to do a, a French perspective of the American perspective of the British perspective... Uh, that would be interesting. I'd please love to hear that. hit... Send me the link because I will listen to it because I think that sounds awesome. Yeah, you know, and we could keep this rolling. Oh, I'm Let's sure. go from French to Wait Spanish. Who's next? I'm Let's sure. just roll this. Th- oh, sure. we need somebody from Hold the Caribbean. On. I'm sure there's a French guy saying right now. Oh yeah, there's a French historian saying yeah. If it wasn't for us, oh well, there and would I agree be no with America. Today, I agree with know. him, but we probably didn't say it enough. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure. But maybe we can get somebody from Jamaica to weigh in on this too. Yeah. <laughs> Kinda, that would be great if you're if you're from the Caribbean and you want to tell us how this how the American Revolution affected your uh, country well, or, or your, the, just your sense of it or this I would I think it would be fascinating to hear that perspective yeah so now for a few notes on the show um, we have coming up soon we have a, a special um, episode that we're going to release that is an interview. That I I did of my my wife's grandmother, who was uh, a refugee for fourteen months in Europe, as the uh, at the end of the um, World War Two, and I interviewed her for an hour and ten minutes, and I I really think that fans of history and people who like hardcore history or the rest is history will really enjoy hearing this first person perspective of real historical events. And so that's going to be coming up soon. We're still going to do the regular hardcore history episodes. Yep. And if you have another interesting um, podcast series or um, book, please go to the Discord channel and 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 send it to us, right? Because I would, and that again, that link will be in the description. There'll also be a link to the rest is history in the description to this series, and a link to uh, the old episodes of Hardcore History on Dan's website. And we're going to be loading this onto YouTube and Spotify and Apple Podcasts. If you if you can, if you enjoyed this, go ahead and, and uh, give us a good review. That would be wonderful. And, and if not, please tell us what you don't like about what we're saying or what, what how we're doing things. Right. And if you're watching this on YouTube, comment anyway because just comments help. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'd like to know. I mean, if you Honestly, liked it, if you absolutely. found this discussion interesting, or uh, weigh in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or way in. If you're Caribbean and watching this on YouTube, <laughs> tell us your thoughts there. Exactly. But we're going to be doing exactly. some interviews. Um, Scott's Scott's uh, wife is Russian, and her mo- her mother is here, and she's Russian, and she's going to come on, and she doesn't speak much English, so Sasha's going to translate. We're going to interview her about her father's uh, involvement as an Air Force pilot in World War II on the Russian side. So oh. we're going to have a, a German refugee perspective and then the daughter of a Russian war hero. Yeah. Um, and if anybody else wants to give us their historical perspective, if, if you've lived through some amazing or terrible historical events and want to be interviewed, please let us know. Well, and the other thing also is uh, whatever remaining stories I have, my grandfather in World War right. II in the Pacific. Right. Um, and uh, Anything like that. See, we don't want to be just a World War II No, my podcast, cousin's involvement in but, Vietnam. But most of the good historical interviews we could do are going to be that. Yeah. Right. So that doesn't mean we're not going to be still doing the Hardcore History episodes if you go to our uh, to the podcast, you'll see that we started with the first episode and are working our way through those. There'll be another one of those coming out soon. Um, we're still doing those. These are extra. And I hope you enjoy them. Cool. Thank you for, for cool. listening. If you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe. Have a nice night. Thank you. Well, they could be watching it in the morning. Whatever. Day. Afternoon.